Welcome to Frost Astrophotography. It's 1 a.m. at night and I'm outside prepping the observatory for a night of imaging. Comet C2022 E3 is visible due east in the early morning hours and I got up at around 4.30 in the morning to be able to capture this comet. Since I'm using a monochrome camera, I needed to use uh, my LRGB filters and that means that I need to take images from all four filters and then combine them together to make up the color image. If you have a one-shot color camera, it might be easier to capture comets because of the techniques needed to stack the images together and align the stars as well as the comet that is moving over the night sky. I captured 10 60 second light frames for each filter and with four filters that is 40 minutes of light frames and total exposure time for this comet. I'm briefly going to go through my processing techniques in PixInsight but this is not going to be an extended tutorial and I will not uh, go into all of the details in the processing of a comet. There's also a lot of techniques that could be used and there's also other software that can be used to process comets. So the idea behind making a comet image is to first make two different stacks of your light frames. The first stack is going to be the stars and those will be aligned in the conventional way with the star alignment process. I first calibrated my images in a conventional way and then I ran star alignment for all of my frames and that is 40 in total, four for each. And then I integrated the light frames for each filter, giving me a master light frame for each filter. So this is the four filters. As you can see here, the comet actually has moved uh, a bit during this time. So the comet image here is not the comet that I'm going to use. This is only to make the stars. Since I ran star alignment for all of the 40 frames, I don't need to make any further alignment between these four masters. So I'm keeping these for later. The next challenge is to make the comet images. And for that we can use a process called comet alignment. So this actually needs to be done in two steps. First of all, I need to align the comet in all of the 10 frames for each filter. Since I have four filters, 10 frame each, I need to open each filter separately and align the comment in those 10 light frames. I then need to integrate those 10 light frames uh, as normal using the uh, image integration. And when I have the four master files for the comment, I also need to align the comment in all of the four filter master frames before I can integrate them into a color image. 
So let me demonstrate how a comet alignment uh, works. I click on add files here and then I'm going to uh, open up my calibrated light frames. I'm selecting blue here just uh, as an example. So these are my 10 light frames for the blue filter. I want to select an output directory. Any directory uh, will do. Now it is important that you use light frames that you have taken in a consecutive order because this software will recognize the movement uh, upon the date of observation that is uh, stamped on the image. So opening up the first by double clicking on it. And I'm going to stretch it so I can see. I'm going to zoom in on the comet and I'm going to click on the nucleus or the head of the comet. And what happens now is that the comet alignment process is recognizing where the comet is in this first frame. I'm then repeating this step for the last frame. I will stretch that and I can zoom in and click on the comet image. I can close these two because I don't need them. The process has registered where the comet is uh, in those two and then it will calculate where it is in the frames in between. So after selecting an output directory you will execute this uh, with apply global and it will create new files with the extension CA that stands for Comet Align. Now when that process is completed, I can use my uh, regular image integration here. I can uh, look up my Comet Aligned files. Uh, here I have my blue files again. As you can see, I'm opening them up, 10 of these. It has the extension CA here that stands for Comet Aligned. And that way I know that the uh, comet has been aligned and the stars have not been aligned. Uh, I've been having some troubles or problems uh, removing the stars. You can use, uh, you can play around with the pixel rejection. Uh, you can use Winsorite's uh, Sigma clipping if you want to. You can also uh, adjust these. Uh, set the sigma low to 4, for example, and the sigma high to as low as possible, 0. But even uh, when I did that, uh, it did not remove uh, all of the stars for me. But that's not a big issue because I'm going to use the star exterminator process instead of the image uh, integration and pixel rejection to remove the stars. Uh, so uh, run this and it will integrate the blue. And when that is completed, you do the same for the uh, three other types of frames. When that uh, is completed, you will have to go back to the uh, comet alignment process, clear this and you then need to add the master files, that, the ones that I have up here but hasn't shown you yet. So I have the master B with the comet aligned. Uh, I also did some dynamic background extraction before integrating. So I'm selecting the master B comet aligned with the dynamic background extraction. And I'm doing the same for G 
and for luminance and for red. So now I have my four master uh, frames for each filter. And then I simply repeat this process. I open up this. I select the comment. I open up the last one. And I select the comet. And then I specify an output directory. I will run this with apply global. And what will happen now is that it will create aligned files for all of the master frames for my filters. So let me show you here. I have four images, one for each frame. You can see that the comment has been aligned here. It does not look like it did in the images where the star had been uh, aligned. So before integrating these, you might want to do some further processing. For example, you need to uh, apply some dynamic crop so that you have cropped the images in the exact same way. And that is uh, valid and crucial, I would say, for the four frames uh, that you have uh, master frames and for the four master frames that you are using with the stars. And uh, in order to do that, you can open up dynamic crop and you select the image, uh, image with the worst uh, situation, so to speak, and you uh, then save or apply the same settings to the other frames so that you end up with the, the same crop for all of the frames. Now, <clears throat> I was going to run uh, some noise extermination, but I found that on my frames, in linear mode, it was not producing uh, such a good result. So I actually stretched my four frames here before using no noise exterminator, and that actually worked out better. So I applied uh, noise exterminator here on all of the frames, as you can see, uh, leaving only my comet in the frame. No background noise or stars whatsoever. So star exterminator and noise exterminator for uh, all of these four frames. And I know it can take a while to do that, uh, but in the star exterminator there is a process batch that is available that you can use. So you can uh, batch uh, the processing of that at least. So <clears throat> when uh, that had completed, I ended up with a comet, a master frame LRGB uh, using the LRGB combination process as normal. And then I adjusted this uh, frame a bit uh, with a range mask that I made. A range mask only selecting the comment here. I can apply that and show you. Uh, show mask. Now it is protecting the background. And now I can manipulate and adjust colors in the comment, saturation for example, or brightness, contrast. But I can also invert the mask protecting the comment and adjust the background with the curves transformation for example, if I want to remove any last bits of uh, gradients for example. The next step that I took was to integrate my four 
master uh, frames uh, where the stars uh, are aligned, not counting the comment. So I integrated those four and I then ran the star exterminator on that integrated frame and generated uh, a star image that gave me an LRGB stars. I ran Blur Exterminator to uh, sharpen the stars and deconvolute them just a little bit. And then I made a combination of my Master Comet LRGB and my LRGB stars producing uh, this image you can see on the screen here. Now I really wanted to have somewhat of a longer tail, but I'm guessing that was not possible with the 10 minutes of exposure that I managed to get for each filter. And I would also would like to have the comet a bit bigger, but that is not possible with my 510 millimeter telescope. Uh, I'm guessing that I could have used Drizzle when integrating these frames just to make it a bit bigger, but uh, that will be the next project. I'm hoping that you found this useful and I might consider doing a more in-depth uh, processing video for comments later on when I've made some more practice images. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you like it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel to be sure not to miss out on upcoming content. If you want to support me and the making of these videos there is an option listed in the video description. Until the next video I wish you have clear skies.